got a couple of things we're going to talk about today. Uh, we're going to start off with uh, some of the latest economic news. We're going to talk about and walk you through various parts of the country that are doing well and other parts that are not doing so well. We're going to actually start with that one first. So in reverse order from the 15th worst state uh, economically going right now to the worst state, uh, we're going to start with number 15. The 15th worst state economically right now is Minnesota. And there's a lot of factors that go into these. Uh, unemployment rate, the year-over-year -year change in unemployment rate, the fourth quarter of 2021 GDP per capita, in other words, per person, uh, the GDP growth, um, the average weekly wages, the percent change in average weekly wages uh, from last year to this year, and the percentage of the population below the poverty line. Some of this, this information is a little dated, uh, this goes back to earlier this year. I think these numbers are still pretty accurate, though. Okay, 15th worst state to do business in economically is the state of Minnesota. Number 14 is, I'm sorry, we're going to start with the best. We're going to start with the best. We'll do the worst later. Uh, 15th best state to do business in is the state of Minnesota. Number 14 is the state of Texas. 13, Idaho. I want everybody to, as I'm going through this, I'd like to everybody's best guess as to the best state. So if you want to go ahead and put in the chat what you think the best state to do business in right now is, we'll see who's right. Number 12, state of Tennessee. Number 11, the state of Colorado. Coming in 10th place, Florida. Ninth is the District of Columbia. Doesn't, doesn't make sense to me, but then again, that's where all the money comes from. So... They're handing it out in their home district. New Jersey is in eighth place. Seventh, state of Nevada. Number six, the state of Utah. Number five, Oregon. Got some guesses in there. Go ahead, put your guesses in there, everybody. When we get to number one, I want to hear what you guys think. Number four, California. Economy's still doing pretty well here, actually. Uh, number three, the state of Washington. Number two, Massachusetts. And number one, I'm not sure anybody got it. It is the state of New Hampshire. It's the best state in the country to do business in right now, economically speaking. Let's go look at the worst ones. This is an interesting list. It's based on the same characteristics. Um, let's go up the list here. The 15th, uh, last... Uh, 15th from the end, the, the 15th worst place to do business, state of Mississippi. West Virginia is number 14. Now, these aren't necessarily the worst place to do business. These are the places that have the worst economy, according to the study that I'm looking at. Number 13 is the state of Alaska. They've been hit hard uh, with the shutdown of all the pipeline stuff that our federal government did. Um, so they are in 13th position. Number 12, Louisiana, also a big oil-rich state. Number 11, Iowa. 10, Kentucky. State of Kentucky, bluegrass state. Number nine, South Dakota. Number eight, New Mexico. Number seven is the state of Ohio. Alabama is in sixth worst place to do business right now. Kansas, number five. North Dakota, number four. Arkansas, number three. Number two, the state of South Carolina. And the worst state. Actually, can you guess? Any guesses, anybody? Worst state to do business in or worst economy right now? Anybody? <laughs> Throw that's, it out there. That's tough. All right. I'll be make Cali it easy. or Florida, possibly. Yeah, Maybe well, those are York. both in the top. Those are in the top 15. The worst place right now is the state of Michigan. That so, sounds about right. Yep. Um, all different reasons. You know, they hit they hit all of the measures, all the bells and whistles, but evidently the economy is not doing well there right now. I would I'd suspect that a lot of that has to do with the fact that that's a, a big car manufacturing place. And we haven't been able to manufacture cars for the last couple of years because we can't get chips. So uh, Detroit, as they call it, uh, the, the head of the, the headquarters for Ford, GM, Chrysler and the like um, it has been hammered hard. So anyway, that is the, the places 
in terms of the general economy that you want to be looking at um, if you're planning to move your business. Now, if you're in our business, it doesn't make that big of a difference, in my opinion, because the state that we're going to show you here coming up, uh, a little video here when we're done with news you can use, um, is a state that I do a lot of uh, business in, and it's the state of Arkansas. And that was the third worst state to do business in. Uh, my, my metric, I think, still holds true. And what I recommend for everybody is if you want to focus on a particular area, make sure that it has the following characteristics. It's got to have, the area itself has to have a good economy, strong economy. There has to be multiple bases for which the economy is based. In other words, it can't just be high-tech industry like Silicon Valley. It can't be manufacturing or like Detroit. It has to have a combination of things. It needs to have... Um, a lot of natural resources nearby um, and by natural resources i'm looking at either beaches mountains some some form of water lakes rivers ocean it needs to have that level of natural resources because that's where people want to live close to or on one of those things or in one of those things um, it also needs to have a strong state supported land grant uh, university system private public it doesn't matter uh, it needs to have that. And the reason for that is because most people that go to college end up, if you look at all the studies, the vast majority of those folks who go to college in a certain area end up living um, in that area rather than go home to where they came from. They, they, they go to Los Angeles to go to UCLA, they end up living in Los Angeles. So um, that's just kind of how that deal works. In fact, both of my sons live in the cities that they graduated college from, um, and it's not the city they're from. So it's uh, it just seems to be how that works out. So if you've got those characteristics, even if you're in a bad economic, overall economic state area, um, that could be a good area for the housing business. And like I said, we'll show you a little video coming up. One more thing that we're gonna show you here right now, actually is gonna put a little picture up. And this is um, Central California. And this was, I was out walking today uh, and these are pretty nice houses. Now, California, the average house price in California is just shy of 900000 850000 something like that. Um, and, and this is in Central California. It's a much more affordable place. Uh, you can see here this sign, brand new, up to four bedrooms from the high $300,000 range. That sign two months ago said $500,000. And in January, that sign said $700,000. I've got pictures of them. I get a chance to find them yet. But I've been photographing that thing as I, I'm out walking when I'm uh, in, back in Central California, uh, as I am now. And I took those pictures from before. And that thing has been cut in half from what it was just in January of this year. A lot of reasons. Lumbers come down. You know, a lot of the things in spite of the fact that you hear um, that, we have inflation out of control. A lot of the things that go into houses have come back under control now, um, where they're a lot more affordable. Plus, there are a lot less buyers out there. And so, especially even for new homes, it's a little bit harder to get the buyers in. Um, so here it is in glorious color. They're selling these things from the high $300,000 range on up. So uh, really shocking development when you see from the, the 700s down to the 300s in a space of about six or seven months. Anyway, um, yeah, we, and, and, and Michelle points out that that does have solar panels. They do. They're nice houses. They're big houses. Um, they're stacked on top of each other. And, uh, you know, that's okay for a lot of people. That's how they want to live. Anyway, that is it for news you can use today. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. And we're going to go ahead and fire up and get over to our regular meeting. We're going to show you a video first. Uh, which actually is going to run right now. This is a video of a house that we completed the rehab on last week. This video, I think, was taken maybe Thursday. We completed the rehab, I think, Wednesday, which was, I told you guys last week, we came in early. So the house was supposed to be done by the 4th or 5th, something like that. It was done on, I think, the 29th of the month. Uh, it also came in... Uh, I said on budget. We actually well, here's the project down in Alexander. Down um, it came in uh, about eight hundred dollars under budget when we, we got our final uh, analysis on this thing. So this is a house in uh, 
in Arkansas. Uh, let's go ahead and listen. This is the, the, the guy who was doing the work, the handyman, the contractor, uh, whatever you want to call him here that did work. And this was like a complete rehab. This was a complete gut job. I think we spent uh, $78,000 on this. Go ahead and run that. Basically been down there for 60 days. Finally, glory be to God, we got done with it today. Gonna do a little walk through here. Uh, we had two 20 yard dumpsters all the way full of junk inside and outside this house. Burned a bunch, had to put in nearly a 800 foot uh, new water service. Over there where that window is behind my trailer was a one car garage. So we ended up making the house a three, two, but going in the front door here, we got this vinyl plank flooring from Gary pack up in Clinton. And, uh, basically we stayed with the original kitchen layout, uh, kitchen cabinets and countertops we got from Barton's. Uh, home outlet, I believe, is what it's called in Conway. Uh, dishwasher range. All new lighting, all new painting. Basically, remodeled the whole house. Uh, definitely on the inside. Uh, we'll have some before and after photos. Y'all can see how nasty this place was when we started in here. I think this was the original master and master closet. Uh, this bathroom here uh, had a huge jacuzzi garden tub in here. Uh, came all the way up against the toilet basically and so we tore it out and uh, put a standard tub in here. Uh, Leon Carter from Greenbrier area helped us out with the tile work here and also in the custom shower I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, originally there was this little corner shower here so we went with a brand new one. Again this uh, 60 inch vanity and in top here we got from Barton's. Uh, they have some pretty good deals there. Of course this is the living room here. Nice big hall closet there. And this was the one car garage. The guy had junk piled up three foot deep in here. Of course, we turned this into an additional bedroom and closet. Manny Green Electrician helped us out. Um, here's the uh, custom shower we did. Uh, Leon Carter from Greenbrier helped us out with this. All Schluter, 100% waterproof, 48 inch vanity. Also, we got from Barton's. Laundry rooms in there. So, after coming down here roughly 40 trips and almost 400 a week on diesel, as you can imagine, we are happy to be done. Thank you, Ashley. All right, so that is the life of uh, a rehab today. Um, several things that I'll, I'll point out uh, just, and then we'll talk about the end result. Um, it's the quality of the rehab. I mean, this is, at the end of the day, it's a $200,000 house. That's what they sell for. Um, it is not, uh, in California, that would be rental grade quality. Right. So it's it's a little bit different quality. And there are differences if you're rehabbing remotely, which this is obviously remotely. My partner is in Atlanta and I'm here in Southern California and um, neither of us have ever been to look at these properties. We don't we've never met any of the people who work for us. It's 100 percent virtual, um, you know, that type of thing. All we've ever seen is photos, videos, that kind of deal. Uh, and, you know, we get, as we do exactly what we tell you to do, which is to get yourself boots on the ground, get yourself a local quarterback, that kind of thing, somebody to keep an eye on it. Uh, but, you know, there's differences by area. So if you watch the walkthrough that he did, you notice in the bathroom, there's no mirrors. Well, it is not considered normal in the state of Arkansas 
to put a mirror in a finished house. I don't know if it's a jinx, bad luck thing or what the deal is, but you know, houses you walk in don't have mirrors. Um, they're, they're to be installed later on by themselves. You get these kinds of differences and you just have to learn as you go. There's no guide to, you know, what's appropriate in New Hampshire, what's normal in Florida, that kind of thing. Some areas, uh, if you don't have a garage, you're dead. Other areas, uh, you know, garage is considered an extra and people are used to parking out the elements. So it's different. Um, in this area, you don't need a garage. I don't know why. You don't need a yard evidently either. I, although I thought we did put in one, but I guess we didn't. Um, anyway, we put this thing on a market Friday night. And I think I told you earlier this week, we sold it for 6,000 over ask. Uh, before we had a chance to even sign that, we had three more offers come in. So I think we've had eight total. Um, and we finally accepted one for 220,000 even, which was about $20,500 over our list price. Do not expect that to happen. Uh, we did not expect that to happen. We just figured we'd get close to our ask price. Uh, we had one bid below uh, the ask, one at the ask, and the other six were above. Uh, in varying degrees to get up to the, the, the final number of 220,000. If we kept on the market another week, we probably could have got more. But, uh, you know, the, the key on these deals is speed. You got to just boom, 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 get this thing done. So, and the one thing he said on that deal is he'd been down there 60 days. He didn't buy, we didn't own that house 60 days ago. So, I mean, it may have seemed that long to him because he was doing that thing every day. But I think we did the total rehab in 31 or 32 days total. Um, and we started it like a day or two after we bought it. And that's the key. That same day, Monday, Tuesday this week, we closed on, an, or I guess it was yesterday, we closed on another one, uh, much bigger duplex um, that we paid 300000 for. We're going to put sixty eight in it. And then we anticipate putting it in the market for five twenty five. It's in a different area um, of the state. And, uh, you know, that, that deal will be done, we're told. I mean, he'll start the rehab on that Monday. So we've spent, you know, we will be burning time, effort, money from yesterday, Wednesday to Monday, but the guy's going to get done in three weeks, the whole rehab. So, you know, once again, owning that house less than 30 days, we already know the day we're going to list it. Um, I used to not be able to do this stuff, believe it or not. It was impossible when I was rehabbing in the early 2000s to come in anywhere close to on time or on budget. Uh, frequently, a, what you estimate was a three-week rehab would be a three-month rehab. Um, but the, the guys that we're able to find, especially when you do it virtually and you're not out there bugging them all the time and looking at the progress, uh, you seem to be able to get these guys that can do a better job, quality, uh, you know, fairly cheap. I mean, these that kind of rehab you just saw, I was doing that in 2004, that same exact kind of rehab for probably 20000 bucks. Um, so, you know, overall the prices have gone up, but that rehab in March of this year would have been a hundred thousand dollar rehab. So prices have come back down. So, uh, one thing I've been telling everybody, keep your eyes open for rehabable projects. We're in that perfect storm window when you could, uh, you know, make a pretty good chunk of money on rehabs, uh, out there. And, um, I would definitely, uh, you know, keep your eyes open for that kind of stuff. I wouldn't pass that stuff by. Now, the game for wholesale is really tough out there right now. Um, if you get a super deal and you can you, you find the right investor, uh, you can get them to pick it up for you. But, you know, people who have any money to do any marketing themselves, even if it's just Facebook marketing, um, you can you know, you can take these things down much cheaper than you could ever buy it from a wholesaler because there's lots of sellers out there and they are in some cases, some areas getting pretty desperate to sell. So time is on your side. Something that Brandy will always tell you is, you know, just wait them out. Just, okay, I'll call you in three weeks, three months or whatever. You'll still probably have that house for sale. And that is absolutely true. The longer you wait, the better deal you're going to get. So Yesterday, one of, and you know, the reason I talk about a lot of this stuff, we'll get to your questions here in a second, is because people all the time say, well, we want to know what you guys do in your business. You know, what are you guys actually out there doing? Yes, we're literally, I'm not in the trenches, going to look at the house, but I'm writing the checks. So 
um, when you get when you've done this 20 years, that's you get to do that. Um, it's not like when you're starting out, but there is a, a, a ton of money if you just keep your head on and uh, you just you work your numbers and that kind of thing. And it's and you you keep abreast of the changes. So that's what we're here to do is to help you guys uh, come up with ideas, come up with a game plan, how to make money. Um, like I said, there are a number of sellers. Oh, the, the one today, we had a, one yesterday, the lady, um, we had an agreement for a purchase of, I think it was $170,000 on a house. So it was going to be worth like two seventy. dollars and needed, in theory, and I hadn't seen it yet, but our acquisitionist did. He said it needed literally $5,000 of work. There was nothing wrong with the inside. Um, it was immaculate shape. And... Um, she uh, she got cold feet after she you know wanted to get it done quick and we're like okay we can close you know in a week or two and you know all that kind of stuff and we already had a realtor lined up and we knew we could get for it and he just sold the house across the street for 269 and our house was bigger and better and all that kind of junk um she she decided to get a little squirrely and say you know well i you know i think maybe i want to wait a little bit maybe the market will go up and so i told tom our acquisition i said here's what you do you send her a message, say that offer that we gave you is only good till Friday. And it's going to drop 5% on Friday and then 5% the following Friday. And she also wanted it closed really quickly. Like she literally wanted us to close it within two or three days and didn't want us a chance to, uh, we had one chance and we're seeing this a lot. We had one chance to go look at it. We did. Um, and we wanted to get our contractor back in to just to make sure that everything was copacetic. And she wouldn't allow that. She wanted it done without a second inspection. That's the third time that's happened to us lately. Um, and so we went and uh, he went back and told her, not only will we not close in 30 days if you take us up on this offer uh, from after Friday, but we're going to raise it by two days every week uh, because we have determined there are factors that we need to investigate more. Basically, her mental health is what we want to do, but... Um, and that scared the crap out of this lady. Um, and so now she's like, okay, you know, can, what time tomorrow do we have to sign by and get it done by and all that kind of stuff. And so I'm, I'm just going to let it drag. I'm going to go watch Thor tonight with my kids at the movie theater. <laughs> and I'm just going to let that thing drag till tomorrow morning. What was decide how much I want to punish her, if at all, for that, for acting stupid. Uh, but you, you have that upper hand again in this business is that's my point. Uh, in this market, and you, you you may not see it on the surface, but it is out there. And I saw this happen. I've seen this kind of thing happen a couple times before, and it really feels good to be in the driver's seat for once instead of, you know, going hand in mouth to these people and, you know, begging uh, with, with your bucket of gruel out there looking for more. So it's, it's a great time to be in this business. There's a ton of money to be made because there are buyers out there. Um, and they evidently, you know, our, our interest rates did go down this week uh, from 5.7 to 5.3, which was actually the biggest drop since 2008. Um, and it's because that everybody is now baking in a giant recession into this economy, uh, which is like, duh, we've been talking about that for months. So they're, you know, they, they artificially inflated the rates. They didn't have to go that high. The Fed over raised the rates and they did it too late. But they, the, the mortgage bankers got together and raised the rates higher and faster than needed to. Now they're settling back down. I don't know how long that'll last. We'll see because we've got another Fed rate increase coming up next week or week after next, I guess. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Anyway, sorry, I took almost a half an hour on news you can use and this various stuff. Uh, but I want to give you guys a sense of what we got going on out there. So. Let's